Section One of The Oresteia. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Oresteia by Aeschylus. Translated by E. D. A. Moreshead. Section One Agamemnon. Part One. The scene is the palace of Atreus at Mycenae. In front of the palace stand statues of the gods, and altars prepared for sacrifices. I pray the gods to quit me of my toils, to close the watch I keep this livelong year. For, as a watchdog lying not at rest, propped on one arm, upon the palace roof of Atreus' race, too long, too well I know the starry conclave of the midnight sky, too well the splendors of the firmament, the lords of light whose kingly aspect shows what time they set or climb the sky in turn, the year's divisions bringing frost or fire, and now as ever am I set to mark when shall stream up the glow of signal flame, the balefire bright and tell its Trojan tale. Troy town is tame. Such issue holds in hope she in whose woman's breast beats heart of man. Thus upon mine unrestful couch I lie, bathed with the dews of night, Unvisited by dreams, ah me, for in the place of sleep stands fear as my familiar, and repels the soft repose that would mine eyelids seal. And if at whiles, for the lost balm of sleep, I medicine my soul with melody of trill or song, anon to tears I turn. Wailing the woe that broods upon this home, Not now by honor guided, as of old. But now at last fair fall the welcome hour That sets me free, When ere the thick night glow with beacon fire Of hope deferred no more. All hail! A beacon light is seen reddening the distant sky. Fire of the night! that brings my spirit day, shedding on Argos light and dance and song. Greetings to fortune! Hail! Let my loud summons ring within the ears of Agamemnon's queen, that she anon start from her couch, and with a shrill voice cry a joyous welcome to the beacon blaze for Ilion's fall. Such fiery message gleams from yon high flame, And I, before the rest, will foot the lightsome measure of our joy. For I can say, my master's dice fell fair. Behold the triple size, the lucky flame. Now be my lot to clasp in loyal love The hand of him restored who rules our home. Home? But I say no more. Upon my tongue treads hard the ox of the adage. Had it voice, the home itself might soothliest tell its tale. I, of set will, speak words the wise may learn. To others, not remember, nor discern. The watchman exits. The chorus of old men of Mycenae enter each leaning on a staff. During their song, Clytemnestra appears in the background, kindling the altars. Ten live long years have rolled away since the twin lords of sceptred sway by Zeus endowed with pride of place the doughty chiefs of Atreus' race went forth of yore to plead with Priam face to face before the judgment seat of war. A thousand ships from our jive land put forth to bear the martial band that with a spirit stern and strong went out to right the kingdom's wrong, pealed as they went the battle song, wild as the vultures cry, when all the eerie soaring high in wild bereaved agony, 
Around, around, in airy rings, They wheel with oarage of their wings, That not the eyeless brood behold, That called them to the nest of old, That let Apollo from the sky, Or Pan, or Zeus, that hear the cry, The exile cry, the wail forlorn, Of birds from whom their home is torn, Of those who wrought the rapine fell, Heaven sends the vengeful fiends of hell. Even so doth Zeus, the jealous lord, And guardian of the hearth and board, Speed Atreus' sons in vengeful ire, Against Paris sends them forth on fire, Her to buy back in war and blood, Whom one did wed, but many wooed, And many, many, by his will, The last embrace of foes shall feel, a many a knee in dust be bowed, And splintered spears on shields ring loud, Of Trojan and of Greek, Before that iron bridal feast be o'er. But as he will, tis ordered all, And woes by heaven ordained must fall. Unsoothed by tears or spilth of wine, Poured forth too late, the wrath divine Glares vengeance on the flameless shrine. And we in grey dishonoured eld, feeble of frame, unfit were held, To join the warrior array, that then went forth unto the fray. And here at home we tarry, fain our feeble footsteps to sustain, Each on his start, so strength doth wane, and turns to childishness again. For while the sap of youth is green, and yet unripened leaps within, the young are weakly as the old, and each unlike are meet to hold the vantage post of war. And ah, when flower and fruit are o'er, and on my tree the leaves are sere, age wendeth propped its journey drear. As forceless as a child, as light and fleeting as a dream of night, lost in the garish day. But thou, O child of Tyndareus, Queen Clytemnestra, speak, and say, What messenger of joy to-day hath well nigh near, What welcome news? And thus in sacrificial wise, E'en to the city's boundaries, Thou biddest altar fires arise. Each god who doth our city guard, And keeps our Argus watch and ward, From heaven above, from earth below, The mighty lords who rule the skies, The market's lesser deities, to each and all the altars glow, piled for the sacrifice. And here and there, and here, afar, streams skyward many a beacon star, conjured and charmed and kindled well by pure oil soft and guileless spell. Hid now no more within the palace's secret store. O queen, we pray thee, whatsoe'er known unto thee were well revealed, that thou wilt trust it to our ear and bid our anxious heart be healed, that waneth now unto despair, now waxing to a presage fair, dawns from the altar hope to scare, from our red hearts the vulture care. List, for the power is mine, to chant on high the chief's emprise, the strength that omens gave. List, on my soul breathes yet a harmony from realms of ageless powers and strong to save. How brother kings, twin lords of one command, Led forth the youth of Hellas in their flower, Urged on their way, with vengeful spear and brand, By warrior birds that watched the parting hour. Go forth to Troy, the eagles seemed to cry, And the sea kings obeyed the sky king's word, When on the right they soared across the sky, And one was black, one bore a white tail bar. High o'er the palace where they seemed to soar, Then lit in sight of all, and rent and tear, Far from the fields that she should range no more, Big with her unborn brood, a mother heir. And one beheld the soldier prophet true, And the two chiefs unlike of soul and will, In the twy-coloured eagles straight he knew, And spake the omen forth for good and ill. Ah, oh, woe, and well a day, but be the issue fair. Go forth, he cried, and Priam's town shall fall, Yet long the time shall be, and flock and herd, The people's wealth that roam before the wall, 
shall force hew down when fate shall give the word. But oh, beware, lest wrath in heaven abide, to dim the glowing battle forge once more, and mar the mighty curb of Trojan pride, the steel of vengeance welded as for war. For virgin Artemis bears jealous hate against the royal house, the evil pair, who rend the unborn brood insatiate, yea, loathes their banquet on the quivering hair. Ah, woe and well a day! But be the issue fair. For well she loves the goddess kind and mild, The tender newborn cubs of lions bold, Too weak to range, and well the sucking child Of every beast that roams by wood and wold. So to the Lord of Heaven she prayeth still, Nay, if it must be, be the omen true, Yet do the visioned eagles presage ill, The end be well, but crossed with evil too. Healer Apollo, be her wrath controlled, nor weave the long delay of thwarting gales to war against the Danaeans, and withhold from the free ocean waves their eager sails. She craves, alas, to see a second life shed forth, a cursed unhallowed sacrifice twixt wedded souls, artificer of strife, and hate that knows not fear and fell device. At home their tarries are like a lurking snake, Biding its time a wrath unreconciled, A wily watcher, passionate to slake In blood resentment for a murdered child. Such was the mighty warning pealed of yore, Amid good tidings, such the word of fear, What time the fateful eagles hovered o'er, The kings and calchas read the omen clear, in strains like his, once more, sing woe and well a day, but be the issue fair. Zeus, if to the unknown that name of many names seem good, Zeus upon thee I call, through the mind's every road I passed, but vain are all, save that which names thee Zeus, the highest one. Were it but mine to cast away the load, the weary load that weighs my spirit down, he that was lord of old, in full-blown pride of place and valour bold, hath fallen, and is gone, even as an old tale told, and he that next held sway, by stronger grasp or throne, hath passed away. And whoso now shall bid the triumph chant arise, to Zeus, and Zeus alone, he shall be found the truly wise. Tis Zeus alone who shows the perfect way of knowledge, he hath ruled, men shall learn wisdom by affliction schooled. In visions of the night like dropping rain, descend the many memories of pain before the spirit's sight, through tears and dole, comes wisdom for the unwilling soul. A boon I wot of all divinity that holds its sacred throne in strength above the sky. And then the elder chief, at whose command the fleet of Greece was manned, cast on the seer no word of hate, but veered before the sudden breath of fate. Our weary while, for ere they put forth sail, did every store, each minished vessel fail, while all the Achaean host at all its anchor lay, looking across to Chalcix and the coast, where restaurant waters welter, rock and sway, and rife with ill delay, from northern Strymon blew the thwarting blast. Mother of famine fell, that holds men wandering still, far from the haven where they fain would be, and pitiless did waste each ship and cable, rotting on the sea, and doubling with delay each weary hour, withered with hope deferred the Achaean's warlike flower. But when for bitter storm a deadlier relief, and heavier with ill to either chief, pleading the ire of Artemis, the seer avowed, the two Atridae smote their sceptres on the plain, and striving hard could not their tears restrain. And then the elder monarch spake aloud, Ill lot were mine to disobey, and ill to smite my child, my household's love and pride, to stain with virginhood a father's hands, And slay my daughter by the altar's side. 
twixt woe and woe I dwell, I dare not like a recreant fly, And leave the league of ships, And fail each true ally, For rightfully they crave, With eager, fiery mind, The virgin's blood, Shed forth to lull the adverse wind, God send the deed be well. Thus on his neck he took Fate's hard compelling yoke, then in the counter gale of will, abhorred, accursed, to recklessness his shifting spirit veered. Alas, that frenzy, first of ills and worst, with evil craft men's soul to sin hath ever stirred. And so he steeled his heart, now well a day, aiding a war for one false woman's sake, his child to slay and with her spilt blood make an offering to speed the ships upon their way. Lusting for war, the bloody arbiters closed heart and ears, and would not hear nor heed the girl voice plead. Pity me, father, nor her prayers, nor tender virgin years. So when the chant of sacrifice was done, her father bade the youthful priestly train, Raise her, like some poor kid, above the altar-stone, From where amid her robes she lay, Sunk all in swoon away, Bad them, as with the bit that mutely tames the steed, Her fair lips' speech refrain, Lest she should speak a curse on Atreus, home and seed. So, trailing on the earth her robe of saffron dye, With one last piteous dart from her beseeching eye, those she should smite she smote, fair silent as a pictured form, but fain to plead, is all forgot. How oft those halls of old, wherein my sire I feast did hold, rang to the virginal soft strain, when I, a stainless child, sang from pure lips and undefiled, sang of my sire, and all his honoured life, and how on him should fall heaven's highest gift and gain. And then, but I beheld not, nor can tell what further fate befell. But this is sure, that Calchas' boding strain can ne'er be void or vain. This wage from justice's hand do sufferers earn, the future to discern. And yet, farewell, O secret of tomorrow, for knowledge is for sorrow, clear with the clear beams of the morrow's sun. The future presseth on. Now let the house's tale, How dark soe'er, Find yet an issue fair. So praise the loyal, Solitary band That guards the Apian land. They turn to Clytemnestra, Who leaves the altars and comes forward. O queen, I come in reverence of thy sway, For, while the ruler's kingly seat is void, the loyal heart before his consort bends. Now, be it sure and certain news of good, all the fair tidings of a flattering hope that bids thee spread the light from shrine to shrine, I fain to hear, yet grudge not if thou hide. As saith the adage, from the womb of night spring forth with promise fair the young child light. I fair even than all hope my news, by Grecian hands is Priam's city taken. What sayest thou? Doubtful heart makes treacherous ear. Hear then again, and plainly, Troy is ours. Thrills through my heart, such joy as wakens tears. Ay, through those tears thine eye looks loyalty. But hast thou proof, to make assurance sure? Go to, I have, unless the god has lied. Hath some night vision won thee to belief? Out on all presage of a slumberous soul. But wert thou cheered by rumour's wingless word? Peace, thou dost chide me as a credulous girl. Say then, how long ago the city fell? Even in this night that now brings forth the dawn. Yet who so swift could speed the message here? From Ida's top, Hephaestus, lord of fire, sent forth his sign, and on and ever on, beacon to beacon, sped the courier flame. From Ida to the crag that Hermes loves, of Lemnos, Thence, unto the steep sublime of Athos, throne of Zeus, the broad blaze flared. Thence, raised aloft to shoot across the sea the moving light, rejoicing in its strength, sped from the pyre of pine, and urged its way in golden glory, like some strange new sun, onward, and reached Machistus's watching heights. 
There, with no dull delay nor heedless sleep, the watchers sped the tidings on in turn, until the guard upon Mesapius's peak saw the far flame gleam on Euripus's tide, and from the high-piled heap of withered firs lit the new sign and bade the message on. Then the strong light, far flown and yet undimmed, shot through the sky above Aesopus's plain, bright as the moon, and on Cytheron's crag aroused another watch of flying fire. And there the sentinels, no whit disowned, but sent redoubled on the hest of flame, swift shot the light above Gorgopus's bay to Aegiplanctus's mount, and bade the peak fail not the onward ordinance of fire. And like a long beard streaming in the wind, full fed with fuel, roared and rose the blaze, and onward flaring gleamed above the cape, beneath which shimmers the Saronic bay, and thence leapt the light unto Arachne's peak, the mountain watch that looks upon our town. Thence to the Atreides' roof, in lineage fair, a bright posterity of Ida's fire. So sped from stage to stage, fulfilled in turn, flame after flame, along the course ordained, and lo, the last to speed upon its way sights the end first, and glows unto the goal, and Troy is ta'en, and by this sign my lord tells me the tale, and ye have learned my word. To heaven, O queen, will I appraise new song, but wouldst thou speak once more, I fain would hear from first to last the marvel of the tale. Think you, this very morn the Greeks in Troy, and loud therein the voice of utter wail, within one cup pour vinegar and oil, and look, unblent, unreconciled, they war. So in the twofold issue of the strife mingle the victor's shout, the captive's moan. For all the conquered whom the sword has spared cling weeping, some unto a brother slain, some childlike to a nursing father's form, and wail the loved and lost, the while their neck bows down already neath the captive's chain. And lo, the victors, now the fight is done, goaded by restless hunger, far and wide range all disordered through the town, to snatch such victual and such rest as chance may give within the captive halls that once were Troy. Joyful to rid them of the frost and dew wherein they couched upon the plain of old, joyful to sleep the gracious night all through, unsummoned of the watching sentinel. Yet let them reverence well the city's gods, the lords of Troy, though fallen, and her shrines, so shall the spoilers not in turn be spoiled. Yea, let no craving for the forbidden gain bid conquerors yield before the darts of greed. For we need yet, before the race be won, homewards, unharmed, to round the course once more, for should the host wax wanton ere it come, then, though the sudden blow of fate be spared, yet in the sight of gods shall rise once more the great wrong of the slain to claim revenge. Now, hearing from this woman's mouth of mine the tale, and eke its warning, pray with me. Luck sway the scale with no uncertain poise, for my fair hopes are changed to fairer joys. A gracious word thy woman's lips have told, worthy of wise man's utterance. O my queen, now with clear trust in thy convincing tale, I set me to salute the gods with song, who bring us bliss to counterpoise our pain. Clytemnestra exits. Zeus, Lord of heaven, and welcome knight of victory, that hast our might with all the glories crowned, on towers of Ilion, free no more, hast flung the mighty mesh of war, and closely girt them round. Till neither warrior may escape, nor stripling lightly overleap the trammels as they close, and close, till with the grip of doom our foes in slavery's coil are bound. Zeus, Lord of Hospitality, in grateful awe I bend to thee. Tis thou hast struck the blow, at Alexander long ago we mark thee bend thy vengeful bow. But long and warily withhold the eager shaft which, uncontrolled, and loose too soon or launched too high, hath wandered bloodless through the sky. Zeus, the high god, whate'er be dim in doubt, this can our thought track out. The blow that fells the sinner is of God, and as he wills, the rod of vengeance smiteth sore. One said of old, the gods list not to hold a reckoning with him whose feet of rest the grace of holiness. An impious word, for whensoever the sire breathed forth rebellious fire, what time his household overflowed the measure of bliss and health and treasure, his children's children read the reckoning plain, at last, in tears and pain, on me, 
Let weal that brings no woe be said, and therewithal content. Who spurns the shrine of right, nor wealth, nor power, shall be to him a tower, to guard him from the gulf. There lies his lot, where all things are forgot. Lust drives him on, lust, desperate and wild, fate, sin, contriving child. And cure is none, beyond concealment clear, kindles sin's baleful glare, as an ill coin beneath the wearing touch, betrays by stain and smutch its metal false, such is the sinful white, before on pinion's light fair pleasure flits, and lures him childlike on, while home and kin make moan beneath the grinding burden of his crime, till in the end of time, cast down of heaven, he pours forth fruitless prayer to powers that will not hear. And such did Paris come unto Atreides' home, and thence, with sin and shame, his welcome to repay, ravished the wife away. And she, unto her country and her kin, leaving the clash of shields and spears and arming ships, and bearing unto Troy destruction for a dower, and over bold in sin, went fleetly through the gates at midnight hour. Oft from the prophet's lips moaned out the warning and the wail, Ah, woe! Woe for the home, the home, and for the chieftain's woe, woe for the bride-bed warm, yet from the lovely limbs the impress of the form of her who loved her lord a while ago. And woe for him who stands, shamed, silent, unreproachful, stretching hands that find her not, and sees, yet will not see, that she is far away, and his sad fancy, yearning o'er the sea, shall summon and recall her wraith once more to queen it in his hall, and sad with many memories the fair cold beauty of each sculptured face, and all to hatefulness is turned their grace, seen blankly by forlorn and hungering eyes. And when the night is deep, come visions, sweet and sad and daring pain, of hopings vain, void, void and vain, for scarce the sleeping sight hath seen its old delight, when through the grasp of love that bid it stay, it vanishes away, on silent wings that roam adown the ways of sleep. Such are the sights the sorrows fell about our hearth, and worth whereof I may not tell. But all the wide town o'er, each home that sent its master far away from Hellas' shore, feels the keen thrill of heart, the pang of loss to-day. For truth to say, the touch of bitter death is manifold, Familiar was each face, and dear as life, that went unto the war. But thither, whence a warrior went to old, doth not return. Only a spear, and sword, and ashes in an urn. For Ares, lord of strife, who doth the swaying scales of battle hold, War's money-changer, giving dust for gold, Sends back to hearts that held them dear, Scant ash of warriors, wet with many a tear, Light to the hand, but heavy to the soul, Yea, fills the light and full with what survived the flame, Death's dusty measure of a hero's reign. Alas, one cries, and yet alas again, Our chief is gone, the hero of the spear, And hath not left his peer. Ah, woe, another moans, my spouse is slain, the death of honour rolled in dust and blood, slain for a woman's sin, a false wife's shame. Such muttered words of bitter mood rise against those who went forth to reclaim, yea, jealous wrath creeps on against that tree's name. And others far beneath the Ilian wall sleep their last sleep, the goodly chiefs and tall, couched in the foeman's land of whereon they gave their breath, and lords of Troy, each in his Trojan grave. 
Therefore, for each and all the city's breast is heavy with a wrath suppressed, as deep and deadly as a curse more loud flung by the common crowd, and brooding deeply doth my soul await tidings of coming fate, buried as yet in darkness' womb. For not forgetful is the high god's doom against the sons of carnage all too long seems the unjust to prosper and be strong, till the dark furies come, and smite them with stern reversal all his home, down into dim obstruction he is gone, and help and hope among the lost is none. For him who vaunteth an exceeding fame impends a woe condign, the vengeful bolt upon his eyes doth flame, Sped from the hand divine, this bliss be mine, ungrudged of God to feel, to tread no city to the dust, nor see my own life thrust down to a slave's estate beneath another's heel. Behold, throughout the city wide have the swift feet of rumour hide, roused by the joyful flame. But is the news they scatter sooth? Or haply do they give for truth some cheat which heaven doth frame? A child were he, and all unwise, who lets his heart with joy be stirred to see the beacon fires arise. And then, beneath some thwarting word, sicken along with hope deferred, the age of woman's insight still, good news from true, divided ill. Light rumours leap within the bound, the pensive female credence round, but lightly born as lightly dies the tale that springs of her surmise. Soon shall we know whereof the bale fires tell, the beacons kindled with transmitted flame, whether as well I deem their tale is true, or whether, like some dream delusive came, the welcome blaze but to befool our soul. For lo, I see a herald from the shore draw hither, shadowed with the olive wreath, and thirsty dust, twin brother of the clay, speaks plain of travel, far and truthful news. No dumb surmise, nor tongue of flame in smoke, fitfully kindled from the mountain pyre, but plainlier shall his voice say, All is well, or but away, forebodings adverse now. And on fair promise, fair fulfilment come, and whoso for the state prays otherwise, himself reap harvest of his ill desire. A herald enters. O oh, land of Argos, fatherland of mine, to thee at last beneath the tenth year's sun my feet return, the bark of my emprise. Though one by one hope's anchors broke away, held by the last, and now ride safely here. Long, long, my soul despaired to win, in death its long for rest within our Argive land. And now all hail, O earth, and hail to thee, new risen sun, and hail our country's God, high ruling Zeus, and thou the Pythian lord, whose arrows smote us once. Smite thou no more. Was not thy wrath wreaked full upon our heads, O King Apollo, by Scamander's side? Turn thou, be turned, be saviour, healer now, and hail all gods who ruled the street and mart, and Hermes hail my patron and my pride, herald of heaven and lord of heralds here. And heroes, ye who sped us on our way, to one and all I cry, receive again with grace such argives as the spear has spared. Ah, home of royalty, beloved halls, and solemn shrines, and gods that front the morn, Benign as erst, with sun-flushed aspect, greet the king returning after many days. For as from night flush out the beams of day, so out of darkness dawns a light, a king, on you, on Argos, Agamemnon comes. Then hail and greet him well, such meed befits him whose right hand hewed down the towers of Troy, with the great axe of Zeus who righteth wrong and smote the plain, smote down to nothingness, each altar, every shrine, and far and wide dies from the whole land's face its offspring fair. Such mighty yoke of fate he set on Troy, our lord and monarch, Atreus's elder son, and comes at last with blissful honor home, highest of all who walk on earth today. Not Paris nor the city's self that paid sin's price with him can boast. 
Whate'er befall, the guerdon we have won outweighs it all. But at fate's judgment seat the robber stands, condemned of rapine, and his prey is torn forth from his hands, and by his deed is reaped a bloody harvest of his home and land, gone down to death, and for his guilt and lust his father's race pays double in the dust. Hail, herald of the Greeks, you come from war. All hail, not death itself can fright me now. Was thy heart wrung with longing for thy land? So that this joy doth brim mine eyes with tears. On you too, then, this sweet distress did fall. How sayest thou? Make me master of thy word. You long for us who pine for you again. Crave the land us who craved it, love for love? Yea, till my brooding heart moaned out with pain. Whence thy despair that mars the army's joy? So pure of wrong is silence, set the all. Thy kings afar, couldst thou fear other men? Death had been sweet as thou didst say, but now? Tis true, fate smiles at last. Throughout our toil these many years, some chances issued fair. And some, I wot, were checkered with a curse. But who on earth hath won the bliss of heaven? For times is whole tenor and unbroken wheel. I could a tale unfold of toiling oars, ill rest, scant landings on a shore, rocks strewn, all pains, all sorrows for our daily doom, and worse and hateful are our woes on land. For where we couched close by the foeman's wall, the river plain was ever dank with dews, dropped from the sky, excluded from the earth a curse that clung unto our sodden garb, and hair as horrid as a wild beast's fell. Why tell the woes of winter, when the birds lay stark and stiff, so stern was Ida's snow? Or summer's scorch, what time the stirless wave sank to its sleep beneath the noonday sun? Why mourn old woes, their pain is passed away, and passed away from those who fell, all care, for evermore to rise and live again. Why sum the count of death, and render thanks for life, by moaning over fate malign? Farewell, a long farewell to all our woes. To us the remnant of the host of Greece comes weal beyond all counterpoise of woe. Thus boast we rightfully to yonder sun, like him far fleeted over sea and land. The Argive host prevailed to conquer Troy, and in the temples of the gods of Greece hung up these spoils, a shining sign to time. Let those who learn this legend bless aright the city and its chieftains, and repay the meed of gratitude to Zeus, who willed and wrought the deed. So stands the tale fulfilled. Thy words all bear my doubt for news of good. The ear of age hath ever youth enow, but those within and Clytemnestra's self would fain hear all. Glad thou their ears and mine. Clytemnestra re-enters. Last night, when first the fiery courier came, in sign that Troy is taken and raised to earth, so wild a cry of joy my lips gave out, that I was chidden. Hath the beacon watch made sure unto thy soul the sack of Troy? A very woman thou, whose heart leaps light at wandering rumors. And with words like these, they showed me how I strayed, misled of hope. Yet on each shrine I set the sacrifice, and, in the strain they held for feminine, went heralds through the city to and fro with voice of loud proclaim, announcing joy. And in each fane they lit and quenched with wine the spicy perfumes fading in the flame. All is fulfilled. I spare your longer tale. The king himself anon shall tell me all. Remains to think what honor best may greet my lord, the majesty of Argos, home. What day beams fairer on a woman's eyes than this, whereon she flings the portal wide to hail her lord, heaven-shielded, home from war? This to my husband, that he tarry not, but turn the city's longing into joy. Yea, let him come, and coming, may he find a wife no other than he left her, true and faithful as a watchdog to his home, his foeman's foe in all her duties leal, trusty to keep for ten long years unmarred the store whereon he set his master seal. Be steel deep dyed before ye look to see ill joy, ill fame from other wight in me. Tis fairly said, thus speaks a noble dame, nor speaks amiss when truth informs the boast. Clytemnestra exits. So has she spoken. Be it yours to learn by clear interpreters her speech's word. Turn to me, herald. Tell me if anon the second well loved lord of Argos comes. Hath Menelaus safely sped with you? Alas, 
brief boon unto my friends it were, to flatter them, for truth with falsehoods fair. Speak joy, if truth be joy, but truth at worst. Look plainly, truth and joy are here divorced. The hero and his bark were wrapped away far from the Grecian fleet. Tis truth, I say. Whether in all men's sight from Ilion born, or from the fleet by stress of weather torn, Full on the mark thy shaft of speech doth light, And one short word hath told long woes aright. But say, what now of him each comrade saith? What their forebodings of his life or death? Ask me no more. The truth is known to none, Save the earth-fostering, all-surveying sun. Say, by what doom the fleet of Greece was driven? How rose, how sank the storm, the wrath of heaven? Nay, ill it were, to mar with sorrow's tale The day of blissful news. The gods demand thanksgiving sundered from solicitude. If one as herald came with rueful face to say, The curse has fallen and the host gone down to death, And one wide wound has reached the city's heart, And out of many homes many are cast and consecrate to death, Beneath the double scourge that Ares loves, The bloody pair, the fire, and the sword of doom. If such sore burden weighed upon my tongue, T'were fit to speak such words as glad and fiends. But... Coming as he comes, who bringeth news of safe return from toil and issues fair, to men rejoicing in a wheel restored. Dare I to dash good words with ill, and say, How the gods' anger smote the Greeks in storm. For fire and sea that erst held bitter feud, now swore conspiracy and pledged their faith, wasting the Argives worn with toil and war. Night in great horror of the rising wave came o'er us. And the blasts that blow from Thrace clash ship with ship and some with plunging prow. Through scudding drifts of spray and raving storm, vanished as strays by some ill shepherd driven. And when at length the sun rose bright, we saw the Aegean sea field flecked with flowers of death, corpses of Grecian men and shattered holes. For us indeed some god, as I well deem no human power, laid hand upon our helm snatched us or prayed us from the powers of air and brought our bark through all unharmed and whole and saving fortune sat and steered us fair so that no surge should gulf us deep in brine nor grind our keel upon a rocky shore so scaped we death that lurks beneath the sea but under day's white light mistrustful of all of fortune's smile we sat and brooded deep shepherds forlorn of thoughts that wandered wild or this new foe for smitten was our host and lost his ashes scattered from the pyre. Of whom, if any, draw his life breath yet, be well assured, he deems of us as dead, and we of him no other fate forebode, but heaven save all. If Menelaus live, he will not tarry, but will surely come. Therefore, if anywhere the high sun's ray decries him upon earth, preserved by Zeus, who wills not yet to wipe his race away, hope still there is that homeward he may win. Enough, thou hast the truth unto the end. Say, from whose lips the presage fell, Who read the future all too well, And named her in her natal hour, Helen, the bride with war for dower. T'was one of the invisible, Guiding his tongue with prescient power, On fleet and host and citadel. War sprung from her, and death did lower, When from the bride-bed's fine-spun veil, she to the zephyr spread her sail. Strong blew the breeze, the surge closed o'er the cloven track of keel and oar, but while she fled, there drove along, fast in her wake, a mighty throng, a thirst for blood, a thirst for war. Forward in fell pursuit they sprung, then leapt on Simois' bank ashore. The leafy coppices among her, no rangers they of wood and field, but huntsmen of the sword and shield. Heaven's jealousy that works its will sped thus on Troy its destined ill. Well named at once the bride and bane, and loud rang out the bridal strain. But they to whom that song befell did turn anon to tears again. Zeus tarries, but avenges still the husband's wrong, the household's stain, he, the hearth's lord, brooks not to see its outraged hospitality. Even now, and in far other tone, Troy chants her dirge of mighty moan, 
Woe upon Paris, woe and hate, Who wooed his country's doom for mate. This is the burden of the groan, Wherewith she wails disconsolate. The blood so many of her own Have poured in vain to fend her fate. Troy, thou hast fed and free to roam, A lion cub within thy home. A suckling creature, newly ta'en from mother's teat, still fully fain of nursing care, and oft caressed within the arms, upon the breast, even as an infant has it lain, or fawns and nicks by hunger pressed, the hand that will assuage its pain, in life's young dawn a well-loved guest, a fondling for the children's play, a joy unto the old and grey. But waxing time and growth betrays The bloodthirst of the lion race, And for the house's fostering care, Unbidden all, it revels there, And bloody recompense repays, Red flesh of time, its talons tear, A mighty beast that slays and slays, And mars with blood the household fair, A god-sent pest invincible, A minister of fate and hell. Even so to Ilian city came by stealth a spirit as of windless seas and skies, a gentle phantom form of joy and wealth, with love's soft arrows speeding from its eyes, love's rose, whose thorn doth pierce the soul in subtle wise. Ah, well a day, the bitter bridal bed, when the fair mischief lay by Paris's side, what curse on palace and on people sped with her the fury sent on Priam's pride by angered Zeus, what tears of many a widowed bride. Long, long ago to mortals this was told, how sweet security and blissful state have curses for their children, so men hold, and for the man of all too prosperous fate springs from a bitter seed some woe insatiate. Alone, alone, I deem far otherwise. Not bliss nor wealth it is, but impious deed, from which that after-growth of ill doth rise. Woe springs from wrong, the plant is like the seed, while right in honour's house doth its own likeness breed. Some past impiety, some grey old crime, breeds the young curse that wantons in our ill, early or late, when haps the appointed time, and out of light brings power of darkness still, a master fiend, a foe unseen, invincible. A pride accursed that broods upon the race, and home in which dark Ate holds her sway, sin's child and woes that wears its parent's face, while right in smoky cribs shines clear as day, and decks with wheel his life who walks the righteous way. From gilded halls that hands polluted raise, right turns away with proud averted eyes, and of the wealth men stamp amiss with praise, heedless to poorer, holier temple highs, and to fate's goal guides all in its appointed wise. Hail to thee, chief of our Atreus' race, returning proud from Troy subdued. How shall I greet thy conquering face? How, nor a fulsome praise obtrude, nor stint the meed of gratitude? For mortal men who fall to ill take little heed of open truth, but seek unto its semblance still the show of weeping and of ruth. To the forlorn will all men pay. But of the grief their eyes display, Nought to the heart doth pierce its way. And with the joy as they beguile, Their lips unto a feigned smile, And force a joy unfelt the while. But he who as a shepherd wise Doth know his flock can ne'er misread Truth in the falsehood of his eyes, Who veils beneath a kindly guise A lukewarm love indeed, and thou, our leader, when of yore thou badst to Greece go forth to war for Helen's sake, I dare avow that then I held thee not as now, 
but to my vision thou didst seem dyed in the hues of disesteem i held thee for a pilot ill and reckless of thy proper will endowing others doomed to die with vain and forced audacity now from my heart ungrudgingly to those that wrought this word be said well fall the labour ye have sped let time and search o king declare what men within thy city's bound were loyal to the kingdom's care and who were faithless found agamemnon enters in a chariot accompanied by cassandra he speaks without descending first as is meet a king's all hail be said to argos and the gods that guard the land gods who with me availed to speed us home with me availed to wring from priam's town the dew of justice in the court of heaven the gods in conclave sat and judged the cause not from a pleader's tongue and at the close unanimous into the urn of doom this sentence gave on ilion and her men death and where hope drew nigh to pardon's urn no hand there was to cast a vote therein and still the smoke of fallen Ilion rises in sight of all men, and the flame of Ate's hecatomb is living yet. And where the towers and dusty ashes sink, rise the rich fumes of pomp and wealth consumed. For this must all men pay unto the gods, the meed of mindful hearts and gratitude. For by our hands the messes of revenge closed on the prey, and for one woman's sake, Troy, trodden by the arg of monster lies. The foal, the shielded band that leapt the wall, what time with autumn sank the Pleiades. Yea, o'er the fencing wall a lion sprang ravening, and lapped his fill of blood of kings. Such preclude are spoken to the gods in full, to you I turn, and to the hidden thing whereof ye spake but now. And in that thought I am as you, and what ye say, say I. For few are they who have such inborn grace as to look upon with love, and envy not, when stands another on the height of the wheel. Deep in his heart whom jealousy hath seized, her poison lurking doth enhance his load, for now beneath his proper woes he chafes, and sighs withal to see another's wheel. I speak not idly, but from knowledge sure, there be who vaunt an utter loyalty, that is but as the ghost of friendship dead, a shadow in a glass of faith gone by. One only, he who went reluctant forth across the seas with me, Odysseus, he was loyal unto me with strength and will, a trusty trace-horse bound unto my car. Thus be he yet beneath the light of day, or dead, as well I fear. I speak his praise. Lastly, whate'er be due to men or gods, with a joint debate, in public council held we will decide, and warily contrive that all which now is well may so abide. For that which happily needs the healer's art, that will we medicine, discerning well if cautery or knife befit the time. Now to my palace and the shrines of home I will pass in, and greet you first and fair, ye gods, who bade me forth and home again, and long may victory tarry in my train. Clytemnestra enters, followed by maidens bearing purple robes. Old men of Argos, lieges of our realm, shame shall not bid me shrink, lest ye should see the love I bear my lord. Such blushing fear dies at the last from hearts of humankind. From mine own soul, and from no alien lips, I know and will reveal the life I bore reluctant through the lingering live-long years, the while my lord beleaguered Ilion's wall. First, that a wife sat sundered from her lord in widowed solitude was utter woe and woe to hear how rumours many tongues all boded evil woe when he who came and he who followed spake of ill on ill keening lost lost all lost through hail and bower had this my husband met so many wounds as by a thousand channels rumours told no network e'er was full of holes as he had he been slain as oft as tidings came that he was dead, he well might boast him now a second Gerion of triple frame, with triple robe of earth above him laid, for that below, no matter how triply dead, dead by one death for every form he bore. 
and thus distraught by news of wrath and woe oft for self-slaughter had i slung the noose but others wrenched it from my neck away hence haps it that orestes thine and mine the pledge and symbol of our wedded troth stands not beside us now as he should stand nor marvel thou at this he dwells with one who guards him loyally tis phocis's king strophius who warned me erst bethink thee queen what woes of doubtful issue well may fall thy lord in daily jeopardy at troy while here a populace uncurbed may cry down with the council down bethink thee too tis the world's way to set a harder heel on fallen power for thy child's absence then such mine excuse no wily afterthought for me long since the gushing fount of tears is wept away no drop is left to shed dim are the eyes that ever watch till dawn weeping the bale fires piled for thy return night after night unkindled if i slept each sound the tiny humming of a gnat roused me again again from fitful dreams wherein i felt thee smitten saw thee slain thrice for each moment of mine hour of sleep all this i bore and now released from woe i hail my lord as watchdog of a fold as saving stay-rope of a storm-tossed ship as column stout that holds the roof aloft as only child unto a sire bereaved as land beheld past hope by crews forlorn as sunshine fair when tempest's wrath is past as gushing spring to thirsty wayfarer so sweet it is to scape the press of pain with such salute i bid my husband hail for heaven be wroth therewith for long and hard i bore that ire of old sweet lord step forth step from thy car i pray thee nay not on earth plant the proud foot o king that trod down troy women why tarry ye whose task it is to spread your monarch's path with tapestry swift swift with purple strew his passage fair that justice lead him to a home at last he scarcely looked to see for what remains zeal unsubdued by sleep shall nerve my hand to work as right and as the gods command daughter of leda watcher o'er my home thy greeting well befits mine absence long for late and hardly has it reached its end know that the praise which honour bids us crave must come from others' lips not from our own see too that not in fashion feminine thou make a warrior's pathway delicate not unto me as to some eastern lord bowing thyself to earth make homage loud strew not this purple that shall make each step an arrogance such pomp beseems the gods not me a mortal man to set his foot on these rich dyes i hold such pride in fear and bid thee honour me as man not god fear not such footcloths and all gods apart loud from the trump of fame my name is blown best gift of heaven it is in glory's hour to think thereon with soberness and thou bethink thee of the adage call none blessed till peaceful death have crowned a life of weal tis said i fain would fare unvexed by fear nay but unsay it thwart not thou my will no i have said and will not mar my word was it fear made this meekness to the gods if cause be cause tis mine for this resolve what thinkest thou in thy place had priam done he surely would have walked on broidered robes then fear not thou the voice of human blame yet mighty is a murmur of a crowd shrink not from envy appanage of bliss war is not the woman's part nor war of words yet happy victors well may yield therein dost crave for triumph in this pitied strife yield of thy grace permit me to prevail then if thou wilt let some one stoop to loose swiftly these sandals slaves beneath my foot and stepping thus upon the sea's rich dye i pray let none among the gods look down with jealous eye on me reluctant all to trample thus and mar a thing of price wasting the wealth of garments silver worth enough hereof and for the stranger maid lead her within but gently god on high looks graciously on him whom triumph's hour has made not pitiless none willingly wear the slave's yoke and she the prize and flower of all we won comes hither in my train gift of the army to which chief and lord now since in this my will bows down to thine i will pass in on purples to my home 
a sea there is, and who shall stay its springs? and deep within its breast a mighty store, precious as silver, of the purple dye, whereby the dipped robe doth its tint renew. Enough of such, O king, within thy halls there lies a store that cannot fail. But I, I would have gladly vowed unto the gods, cost of a thousand garments trodden thus, had once the oracle such gift required, contriving ransom for thy life preserved. For while the stock is firm, the foliage climbs, spreading a shade what time the dog-star glows. And thou, returning to thine hearth and home, art as a genial warmth in winter hours, or as coolness when the Lord of heaven mellows the juice within the bitter grape. Such boons and more doth bring into a home the present footstep of its proper Lord. Zeus, Zeus, fulfillment's Lord, my vows fulfill, and whatsoe'er it be, work forth thy will. All but Cassandra and the chorus exit. End of part one.